inconceivable. Hey guys, Rex here. So we're taking a look at the Therm Knight TNC 635 Romeo. This is from DNT Optics. This is the first one of their units I've ever seen. And so for the sake of science, I'm gonna check this out. This is my first time uh, really playing with this. We haven't shot it yet. So this is just an initial overview of what we're looking at. Where'd Garfield go? Garfield. See? I can identify which critter that is. That's Garfield. Because I can see full color. And I got full thermal capability at the same time. Now, how cool is that? I've had a few requests to do a combo like this where you have both a thermal sight and a digital day-night optic in one unit. So on the bottom here, just to get general orientation, the bottom whole section is our thermal camera unit, which is a optical sight. And we also have a digital day-night optic on top. This is both day vision and night vision modes in here. We do have infrared illumination. This particular one is 850 nanometers IR illuminator here. We have a laser range finding unit here. And I do believe there's some ballistic features that are incorporated into that. I'm going to engage the laser. 92 meters, which would be 100 yards, 91.44 meters. So, and I am slightly behind the 100 yard line, about half a meter. So that's about right. So the laser range finder is accurate. Okay, I'm going to actually, now it's given us a dope on the side there. So the laser range finder is connected to the ballistic drop compensator. So I'm gonna get a new laser reading here. I'm gonna lay the trees out there and see if it can find 721. Okay, good. So I'm gonna hit it again. To, so I lock it in. So I hit the laser button one time to engage the laser. It starts to read the distance to the target. I hit it a second time and it gives me my dope above the range reading. So 722 meters, 7.9 MRADs for the load that came in the optic. And we'll, we'll review what that is when we go into the settings when we do the full review. But it is giving me dope and a holdover point. So let me zoom in on the reticle. Man, that's pretty cool. So it's showing me with a red marker on a green reticle here, exactly where to hold. So 7.9 is highlighted on the reticle. So I employ the reticle holdover. That's pretty gosh darn cool. And so to come back down, so I can zoom in all the way. Now on the thermal view, of course, our max magnification is six. So your reticle is going to be, um, you know, you're not gonna be zooming in as much on the first focal plane reticle at 12 mils, okay? But uh, if we take it out of picture in picture mode, you're gonna see a lot more of the reticle on the digital night scope part because it has a higher magnification. It starts at five power and goes up to 20. So you're gonna be able to zoom in on the reticle very well. So I'm just scanning here, trying to show you guys. Now you see how the picture in picture, when I locked in our long range target at 722 meters, it locked in to center the actual aiming point on the picture in picture view digitally. So we are, that's why you see the crosshair is like at the very, very top, because the center where there's a, a red reticle, if you're looking in the top box and you see the green illuminated portion, that's zooming in on where we're actually gonna hold for that target. So to take it out of that mode, I'm going to hit the button again and it recentered on the center of the reticle. So this is for my point blank stuff and it is still lazing. I'm gonna hold it in and that turns off the unit. So now we're just zeroed wherever we're zeroed. I can employ this normally without the laser and I can just use my reticle for ranging. I can do stadiometric ranging with my reticle, etc. But uh, I can see bullet holes at 100. 
when I zoom into 20 power here, I'm gonna try to micro focus. If you look at the top view of the digital, it's a digital zoom on an optical five power. I'm seeing, those are bullet holes and some tape marks that we're looking at. Those little round black things are the bullet holes on the target there. That might be pretty gosh darn handy to have two scopes in one, right? So we have, in the very rear, we have our ocular, of course, this is to adjust the clarity of our viewing deal. We have a viewing window back here, a display, kind of like a digital camera display. We have an eye cup, of course. This is our magnification ring. Now this magnification ring does work for both the digital optic and the thermal optic. So if you switch back and forth between digital and thermal by using this button right here, you just hit that button to go to digital or you hit that button to go to thermal. Um, this magnification will, this is low and this is high. So there is the kernel, <laughs> the rooster. We're observing the birds here. We had a little bit of a, I don't know if you noticed that little bit of a reset. We'll see how that turns out in the video play. So every few seconds, the thermal view will reset. We'll see in, when we review the footage if that's the same with the digital or if the digital keeps going. There they are. I'm going to increase magnification. And that does increase for both the digital and the thermal on the same exact ring simultaneously. So in order to... I'm going to see if I can focus this thermal. It's a little difficult to get at the thermal focus ring with all the stuff on it. But there we go. So we're on max magnification here. And I'll pan back. I think that picture in picture is absolutely where it's at. That's uh, pretty gosh darn handy. So you're going to be able to locate your targets pretty easily with a the thermal. Now you have a different setting up here than you do down here. This has a little bit lower magnification setting than up here. We'll go over the specs in a minute. We do have this laser range finder. I think I showed that to you guys. And we have our, this is our focus for the thermal unit. So when you're running the thermal, this is your focus for when you're at distance. And this is your focus for your digital day night scope when you're running that. Back here, we have pretty simple display um, of buttons. We have the power button. So you just, you know, push on to turn on the power. And if you wanna uh, turn it on, you gotta hold, hold it in for a bit. We have our menu button. With a quick press like that, it switches the reticle color. So you have a few different reticle colors to choose from. And with the long press, you can get into the menu. So I think that's what that dotted line represents is the menu would be the gears. So the long press is below there, right? On this side, we have our picture in picture button. So if I do a short press, it's going to just simply adjust the screen brightness. But if I do a long press, it'll switch to picture in picture mode, which means I can run the digital site at the same time as the thermal and get the best of both worlds in real time. Now, when are you gonna engage water sprinklers? I don't think ever, but it's just giving you a dynamic idea of the kind of things that you're gonna, you know, different things are gonna have different visibility in different modes. We have a kitty cat over by the barn. Take a look at him. Now on thermal, I would only be able to know that is a cat of some kind. On the digital mode, I can identify which one that is. That is Nova, the kitty with the name Nova. That's Mama Kitty. So I can tell because I can see full color. I can actually identify my target on the digital mode and find the target on thermal mode. So there's uh, Mr. Garfield getting his daily vegetables. Yeah, he looks like a pretty happy one. See? And with full color, I can actually see what this is. With thermal, I might get, be confused as to what I'm looking at. But in color, it gives me a lot more information. That is a toy crane. 
right? I would not maybe be able to discern that just at a glance if I only had thermal, right? So for identifying objects, specific individual animals or individual animate entities, <laughs> I think it's wise to have the picture in picture. Very cool. So that's how I engage that deal. This is a record button. A short press puts you in RAV mode, which is, a, I think, recording um, with recoil, recoil activated video. And then a long press uh, starts or ends normal recording, okay? And then on this side over here, we have a color mode switch button. So if I'm in my thermal, if I'm running the thermal, okay, and I hit this button here, and I do a long press, it's gonna change the color palettes, and there's a number of different color palettes on this. And if I do a long press, it's gonna put me on manual uh, NUC, okay? Which is, NUC is non-uniformity calibration mode, okay? So that'll be handy to know later. We'll go over the details in a future review. Um, this here is our laser rangefinder activation, and this is to switch between thermal and digital mode. Okay, we are set up out here now. We're looking at the obstructed, mostly E-type target, which is obstructed by corn. I'm going to hit record. I'm going to hold that in there. We are now recording on the unit. And so I'm looking at the top bar of the E-type, which is, you can see in the digital view, in the small picture-in-picture -picture box on the top, you can see a pretty clear view of the top bar there. So we're on 1.5 power on the thermal, and the blur to the left is this tree that's right in front of us. And I'm shooting through leaves and branches and corn. So I'm going to turn up the magnification. Let's see if you guys can see that we got some mirage out there. So you can see that top bar. Okay. So I know where the target is. If I get the right angle, I should be able to get above the corn and come back down into the target. I think it would work almost fine, although that terminal leg might, when you get right down into it, clip some of the leaves in. It could throw us off a little bit. But not as much as you might think with the larger caliber. So there she is right there. I'm going to see if I can get a longer distance reading. I'm going to bring this a little bit over this way. Okay, we're going to look out here in the field a little more. So there's the post up close. You see that digitally? We have a pile of logs right there. I'm going to zero in on that. Okay. So why you're seeing it looking like all staticky, that's the, that's the mirage. Because it is hot and humid out there. All right, so I am going to attempt to get a laser reading. So our laser is now on. 810 meters. Now if I go past that, I'm picking up some other stuff. 810 meters, I'm going to hit the button again and lock it. So there's my holdover right there. Now in order to use the reticle, I'm going to need to pan all the way back. And if you can see the red, on, now on the thermal, we have the red highlighting where to aim. And on the digital, it's actually green on red for the aiming point. So there's our aiming point right there. If I want to engage one of the targets out there, the holdover would be 9.6 MRADs. Pretty darn cool, huh? And if I zoom in, see, now when I zoom in, although we're below the reticle in the picture-in-picture picture digitally, it's still giving me my aim of, aiming point and centering on the aiming point, which is a pretty gosh darn smart design. So your aiming point is what's centered on in the picture-in-picture picture, rather than the uh, center of the reticle. That's pretty smart, I think. Very cool. Our battery is contained back here, and it does run a proprietary battery that's a little different than the uh, 18650. It's a fatter battery. Here's one of the batteries right here, okay? So this is a INR 21700 
50 Echo battery. I don't know if you can see the INR 21750. And it did come with two of them. I got one of them in here right now. We recharge it with this little unit here. Okay. So you just put your batteries in here. It'll tell you where you're at for battery life, but then you just plug it in here and you have a few different modes right there. We can charge charging modes, okay? But we have our charging cables, which are, we have a USB-C, zoom in there. We have a USB-C on one end, that's to plug into here or into the optic itself. On the other side, we have our battery charging port. You can interface directly with the computer, so there is the unit.